Welcome to St. Timothy Lutheran Church for our Ash Wednesday service. This is not your typical Ash Wednesday service, but then again, this is not your typical Ash Wednesday. This is instead an invitation. An invitation to go on a journey. A journey that begins today and travels all through Lent. Part of that invitation is uh, to invite you to three opportunities today to come to the church and receive ashes. You may drive up and you'll be greeted at the entrance of our church between 7 and 8.30 a.m., 12 and 1 p.m., and 5 and 6.30 p.m. So stop by and receive that sign of our mortality. And those words that we long to hear that we are dust, and to dust we shall return, as we mark your forehead with the same sign that was given to you at your baptism, the sign of the cross. And so it is beneath that sign of the cross that we begin our Ash Wednesday service. The grace and mercy of God who in Christ bears our burdens and saves us from sin, be with you all. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly, repenting of our sins, we may obtain from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading tonight comes from Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice and to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? 
when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like the watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned at the top, this is not your typical Ash Wednesday service, and so this, this isn't your typical Ash Wednesday homily either. This is an invitation, an invitation to go on a journey. Because Lent, after all, is just that, a journey. Unlike most journeys, however, we don't, <laughs> we don't have to actually go anywhere to take it, which is perfect. I mean, these days we're all looking for uh, a few more inside activities to do. So I know many of us are going fewer places these days. I mean, I mean just look outside between COVID and the unrelenting cold and the feet of snow that have piled up. It seems strange to say this, but hear me out. Lent has come at a perfect time. So fear not. You don't have to go outside and clean the snow off your car. You don't have to lace up those heavy duty boots. You don't need to remember your face mask because the journey we take in Lent is a spiritual one. And on this journey, we are asked during these 40 days to let our soul do the walking. And here's the invitation. Here's what that journey looks like, or rather what it could look like. Because for each one of us, that journey should and probably will look different. We each have to look in our own souls and listen to the deep longings that reside there. What do we need to do this Lent to grow closer to God? Because whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you can take this journey through Lent. For some of us, we might be a little old school, right? For you, this Lenten journey always was and always will be a time for fasting. Like Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, you are going to give something up. I'm not going to take the time to list all those things, all those options for what you might want to take a step back from in your life these days. But whatever it is, whatever your soul needs to let go of, I invite you to take that journey. Because by removing something from your life, how might your life actually grow? Or perhaps here's another invitation. Perhaps when you hear the story of Jesus going into the desert for a time of fasting, you are the one who likes to remind everyone that he also went into the desert to pray. Perhaps your journey this Lent is just that. A time set aside each day beneath the warmth and light of a candle as you pray for the world, those in need, and whatever is on your heart. 
Or maybe what you need in that time is just silence. For it is in the silence that we can often hear that still small voice of God that that reaches out to us. If we just had time. If we had time to hear and hearts to listen. Or here's another invitation. People sometimes ask me, I get this question quite often. If I was going to read the Bible, uh, where should I start? I don't think it's a coincidence that people often ask this at the beginning of Lent. For them, the Bible is one enormous journey to take. So let me suggest this. If you haven't done so in a while, this Lent, use this as an invitation to revisit the Gospels. I think there's, there's a fun faith exercise in reading all four in succession. But if that journey sounds too arduous, just pick one. You could pick Luther's favorite gospel, the Gospel of John, which is full of cryptic and thought-provoking sayings of Jesus that aren't found anywhere else. Or perhaps you prefer, prefer Luke, full of beautiful songs and wonderful language. Matthew, for instance, is a favorite among some Christian traditions for its more embodied sacramental language. Or if you're into the whole brevity thing, There's always Mark, the shortest of the Gospels. And finally, I invite you on just one more opportunity for a journey. And you can do any one of these or all of them or something I haven't even mentioned. But this last one is the journey Jesus takes. That begins with his condemnation and ends with his sacrificial death on the cross. During Lent, Pastor David and I will be writing devotions Monday through Friday. And these devotions will follow follow Jesus through the historic 14 stations of the cross. And on our journey, we will spiritually walk as Jesus walked. We will carry the cross as Jesus carried the cross. We will fall as Jesus falls And beneath the cross, as Jesus is lifted above us for what seems to all gathered around to be the end of the journey, we will once more meet our Lord and Savior. So come, you are invited on a journey that begins with a cross of ashes on our foreheads and ends in the outstretched arms of our risen Savior. Now that's, that's a journey I want to take, that I want to take with you. Amen. Ashes touch our face, mark our failure and our falling. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow. Take us as disciples, washed and wakened by your calling. Take us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sand. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, come. Dust and ashes soil our hands, greed of market, pride of nation. Holy Spirit, come, walk with us tomorrow as we pray and struggle through the meshes of oppression. Take us 
us by the hand and lead us, lead us through the desert sands. Bring us living water, Holy Spirit, Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy and communion with him, to love all humanity and to live in harmony with all of his creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors and creation. And so we do not enjoy the life our creator intended for us. Also by our sin, we grieve our heavenly father who does not desire us to come under his judgment, but to turn to him and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from love of God and love of neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love. The disciplines of Lent help us to wage our spiritual warfare. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking God for strength to persevere in our Lenten discipline. Please join me in the words of confession. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this Lenten journey, may God's spirit lead you to repentance and new life. Turn your hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen.